All right, guys, um, continuing our discussion with uh, weight loss. So uh, weight loss uh, medications is uh, are mostly um, stimulants, but there are other medications that can be used um, or uh, they have side effects that can cause uh, weight loss. So when do you decide to start a patient on a weight loss medication. So for medications, if the BMI is greater than 30, then you can start a weight loss medication. Or if the BMI is greater than 27, plus obesity related conditions like hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, and obstructive sleep apnea. Um, for bariatric surgery, uh, you can uh, elect to do surgery for them if the BMI is greater than 40. Um, or if the BMI is greater than 35 plus obesity uh, conditions. And you don't really have to know too much about bariatric surgery, um, like um, gastric sleeve or gastric bypass um, or any of these surgeries until maybe you're 30 year uh, when, you, uh, when you go on your surgery rotation. Um, so starting with uh, the uh, medication. So the first medication that we're going to talk about is methamphetamine. Uh, and this is one of the amphetamines. And uh, how it works is that it's a sympathomimetic. It releases dopamine. And, well, you're going to ask me, how is that related to weight loss? And the thought is um, that it affects the neurotransmitters um, in the hypothalamus that are related to uh, satiety. Um, so that's, uh, that's possibly how it works. Uh, efficacy, uh, weight loss is about 0 0.5 pounds per week, and you get tolerance for these medications. Uh, side effect is what I want you guys to focus on, um, and I want you guys to understand the concept too, that every time that you're releasing neurotransmitters, vasoactive neurotransmitters like dopamine or norepinephrine, you are going to stimulate the heart, and you're going to get a risk of uh, cardiac risk. So because you're stimulating the heart, you can have risk for MI, and you can also have a risk for stroke because you're constricting these blood vessels and you can cause a stroke. Um, these ha have high abuse potential and then they can cause insomnia. Uh, fentramine is sort of um, a cousin to amphetamines. It's an ulcin pathomimetic that releases norepinephrine. Uh, ca uh, causes about 2 to 10 kilo weight loss and need to be taken chronically. It has a low abuse potential and it also has cardiovascular side effects because, you know, it releases norepinephrine. Um, fentramine can also be combined with topiramate. So Mike talked to you guys about topiramate, which is an anti-epileptic medication uh, used for seizures. I talked to you guys about topiramate uh, as a medication that's used to prevent migraine headaches. And now we're going to talk about it in the context of weight loss. So if you think about it, there's three uses for topiramate. So in this context, uh, topiramate has been found to have a side effect of uh, weight loss. So when you combine it with fentramine, it causes greater weight loss. However, um, more side effects for topiramate is that it causes paresthesia, dyskusia, where you can't smell, and insomnia. And you want to avoid uh, this medication in pregnancy because it's teratogenic. Uh, next medication is naltrexone and bupropion. Can you guys tell me what naltrexone is? Yes, yeah, so naltrexone is an opioid antagonist. It antagonizes the action of opioid. And bupropion um, is an antidepressant medication. So we talked also about bupropion. I kind of want to bring as a full picture for you. So bupropion is an antidepressant medication. Uh, it's used in depression. And it's also a medication that's used for smoking cessation because it acts as a nicotine antagonist. And it also has the side effect of weight loss. So there's three different uses for it. Um, Antiepileptic, uh, sorry, antidepressant, uh, weight loss, and uh, smoking cessation. So it's very important for you guys as you're studying for step one to kind of uh, <clears throat> collect these things and kind of combine things to understand the more than one reason to use medication. Um, how um, 
how that works is naltrexone specifically works on appetite regulation center in the hypothalamus and the mesolimbic system. You need escalating doses um, and black box warning uh, suicidal ideation because you're using bupropione, which has a black box warning for suicidal ideation. Uh, Lorcaserin um, is, is another medication that you can use. It's a serotonin agonist, uh, activates the POMC. So do you guys remember the POMC? Yes, it's that molecule longer time ago that you've studied in uh, physiology. It's released from the um, uh, pituitary, and it's broken down into alpha MSH, ACTH, and endorphins. So the alpha MSH is what's responsible for uh, satiety. Um, so lorcaserin uh, is used. Drug interactions, because it's a serotonin agonist, you can have serotonin syndrome with these SSRIs and the triptanes. Um, next medication that I want to talk about is Orlistat. Orlistat is not uh, mentioned in your um, in your lecture, but I would like to talk about it because it's in first aid and I've seen it on multiple questions. So Orlistat inhibits gastric and pancreatic lipase, and because they inhibit the lipase, you can uh, it decreases the breakdown and absorption of dietary fats. So if you break, uh, if you decrease the absorption of fat, then you're going to have less fat um, going into your body, and you're you know you're going to weigh less. Uh, side effect, you can extrapolate it from the medications. What side effect that you're going to think uh, you're going to have if you don't absorb fat? Yes, you're going to have fat in your poop, which is steatorrhea. And you're also going to have deficiency of the fat-soluble vitamins, so A, D, E, and K. The common, common question that I've seen with Orlistat is they'll give you a patient uh, that's taken Orlistat, and uh, they're coming to you... Um, and they'll ask you what what vitamin they will be deficient in, and the question the answer will be uh, A, D, like A, vitamin A, D, E, and K. Uh, next class of medications for weight loss is antidepressants, so fluoxetine, sertraline, and paroxetine. Uh, they have some weight loss uh, um, uh, associated with them. Uh, antiepileptics we already talked about, topiramate, zunosamide is another one that you don't really have to know too much about, and the last class is the diabetes drug. Um, we're going to study diabetes in, I think, a couple exams. What I want you to know for now is these three medications, metformin, problinotide, and exenotide. Um, these three medications cause uh, weight loss. Uh, I don't think they will ask you right now about the mechanism of action, and I don't want to talk about it uh, right now because we will cover it in depth um, for the diabetes section. So in summary, weight loss, amphetamines, um, and fentermine and topiramate you can combine it with, uh, naltrexone and bupropion, uh, lorcaserin, which is serotonin agonist, orlistat inhibit, um, gastric and pancreatic lipase, antidepressants, antiepileptics, and diabetes drugs. Um, so since we're talking about weight loss and we've used stimulants, which is amphetamines, we're also going to talk about uh, stimulants. So um, starting the discussion uh, with caffeine. So caffeine is a mild uh, stimulant. Well, depends on how much you're taking. But um, does anyone know how caffeine works in stimulation of, you know, the makes you awake. So caffeine is actually an adenosine receptor blocker. And adenosine, as you know, it's um, coming from the metabolism of ATP for energy. So adenosine accumulation actually leads to drowsiness. So it blocks um, adenosine. Um, you get tolerance to caffeine and you have some mild withdrawal symptoms. Uh, next stimulant is a medication called modafinil. So modafinil is a medication that increases dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin uh, in the central nervous system. We don't really know how specifically it works, but at least we know that it increases these um, neurotransmitters. Uh, it's used for narcolepsy and shift work uh, disorders. Uh, so that is the uh, most common use for modafinil. There are some other off-label uh, use, but uh, narcolepsy is the one that I want you guys to be aware of. What are the side effects of modafinil? So what's going to happen when you increase dopamine norepinephrine? 
vasoactive substances, you're gonna have cardiac side effects. In addition, uh, you get some skin conditions like Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis or dress syndrome, uh, but these are less common and they're not, uh, they're not very frequently tested. Uh, next medication in stimulant category that we're going to talk about is amphetamine. Uh, so amphetamines displace norepinephrine from the synaptic vesicles, so increase norepinephrine synapses, and they also inhibit norepinephrine reuptake. Uh, they are used in ADHD and they're also used in narcolepsy. Uh, side effects of amphetamine is actually much stronger than modafinil, so they can cause coronary vasospasm um, and uh, they can uh, if in high doses, they can lead to myocardial infarction. Uh, they cause hallucination and euphoria, and they cause pupillary dilation. Quick question. Do you guys know why amphetamines cause pupillary dilation? So if you think about it, the uh, eye is controlled, the, the dilation of, or the diameter of the pupil is controlled by two muscles. The... Um, uh, the one that dilates and the one that constricts, and the name escapes my mind right now. But the one that uh, can the one that constricts is, is controlled by acetylcholine, and the one that dilates is controlled by norepinephrine or the sympathetic nervous system. So amphetamines increase the norepinephrine in the vessels, so they cause pupillary dilation. Uh, in addition, they cause also cause anorexia, which we talked about, uh, that can be used for purposes of weight loss. Uh, methylphenidate is also a type of amphetamine, um, blocks uh, the reuptake of norepinephrine and dopamine. They're used for ADHD and narcolepsy, same side effects as amphetamines. So I just wanted to put you put for you guys a quick summary for narcolepsy, the treatment of narcolepsy and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So for narcolepsy, um, uh, you use two things. So uh, you use medication for daytime uh, stimulation, so modafinil or amphetamines. Um, and sometimes in severe narcolepsy, you can actually use medications that help in sleep aid, the nighttime sleep aid. And GHB is uh, one of the medications that are used uh, in narcolepsy. So GHB is a GABA precursor, and I don't know if you guys have are familiar with it, but it's the medication that's used uh, for uh, date rape, or it's called a rape drug. Uh, it's actually very effective for narcolepsy, and you'll see these, you'll see GHB on questions, not commonly, but it's, you know, for the overachiever that wants to, you know, get a 300 on the step. Uh, which I don't think it's physically possible. Um, anyways, uh, ADHD um, use stimulants like methylphenidate or amphetamines. Uh, cognitive behavioral uh, therapy also works for ADHD. There are some non-stimulant or non-amphetamine medications that are used in ADHD, uh, like etu etamoxetine, uh, which is a non-amphetamine norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, and guanfacine or clonidine. Uh, and do you guys remember where have we seen this medication, clonidine? Yes, it's an antihypertensive medication, and it's a central alpha-2 agonist. And how it works is that increased norepinephrine in the synapses. So that is the summary for uh, stimulants. Uh, we will uh, finish uh, at that.